A Guide to Growing Rosemary This aromatic herb originates from the Mediterranean coast and adds a punch of flavor to a variety of dishes. It can be used in jams and jellies, cookies, and pairs well with lamb, pork, or chicken. Its oils can also be extracted for use in aromatherapy. Rosemary Varieties Arp Its leaves are light green, has a lemony scent, and is especially cold hardy. Blue Boy Rosemary A slow-growing herb that works well in containers or as a border plant with edible tiny leaves. It's a creeping rosemary that makes a lovely scented ground cover. Joyce de Baggio, Golden Rain or Golden Rosemary A variety that's golden color. Sometimes mistaken for a variegated, multicolored plant, the leaf color actually changes with the seasons. Leaves are bright yellow in the spring and fall and become a dark green during the summer. Pine-scented rosemary. This type has wispy or feathery looking leaves. It's a creeping rosemary with small leaves and pale pink flowers that bloom in the late winter. It can become a bit out of hand if not pruned frequently, but luckily this rosemary isn't damaged in any way from pruning. Santa Barbara. Another trailing rosemary that's a vigorous grower it can reach lengths of three feet, one meter or more. Spice Islands, a very flavorful variety that grows as an erect four-foot shrub. It blossoms with dark blue flowers in the late winter and early spring. Upright Rosemary, this variety has wonderfully flavored leaves and dark blue flowers. White Rosemary, blooms with lots of white flowers from midwinter to late spring. It's also very aromatic and acts as a bee magnet. While rosemary can be grown from seed, it's not the most ideal. Rosemary grows best when it's propagated from cuttings. This herb also thrives best in soils with a pH level between 6.0 and 7.0. Starting from seed. Germination can sometimes be slow and erratic, needing 12 to 28 days or more. Rosemary's ideal soil temperature for germination is 60 degrees Fahrenheit, 16 degrees Celsius, and they don't need light to germinate. Once germinated, rosemary is highly prone to damping off. To avoid this, keep watering to a minimum, provide bright light, and make sure it's well ventilated. It takes about 16 to 18 weeks to go from seeding to a plant in 4-inch pots. Starting from cuttings. This is the best way to grow new rosemary. Simply take some tip cuttings that are about 3 to 4 inches, 5 to 10 centimeters long. Remove the leaves from the lower half of the cutting, then plant it in light textured potting soil. The cutting should be watered regularly and kept moist, but not wet while it roots. Cuttings placed under an irregular mist will start to root in 10 days, and new plants should be ready for transplanting after about eight weeks. Planting. After the hardening off process, transplant cuttings to the garden, spacing them 18 inches, 45 centimeters apart, and allowing for about four feet, 1.2 meters between rows. Container planting. Once the cuttings have roots, transplant them into individual pots and plant them about six to eight inches deep. Pinch off the very top of the cutting to encourage it to develop branches. It's important to keep rosemary plants watered in hot weather. Then when cold weather approaches, mulch around all of the plants. In places that get severe winters, where the temperatures stay well below 30 degrees Fahrenheit or negative one degree Celsius, Rosemary plants will have to be brought indoors during the coldest months. If their roots freeze in times of hard frost, then the plants will die. Note, rosemary that's grown in the ground does not transplant to containers well, so consider growing it in a container that can be brought inside during the colder months. Pruning. Rosemary pruning can be done any time during the spring or summer, up until four to six weeks before the first frost. Any pruning shears should be sharp and clean, 
because blunt or dirty pruning shears can leave ragged cuts that make the rosemary plant vulnerable to bacteria and pests. To reduce the size of rosemary, the plant can be pruned back by one third at a time, then wait two to three months to repeat the process. When pruning to simply create a busier bush, remove the end one to two inches, 2.5 to five centimeters of its branches. This will force the branch to split, creating a bushier plant. This technique is particularly helpful if the rosemary is being grown for cooking, since the technique creates more foliage in a more compact space. Rosemary is not a heavy feeder, but fertilizing in the spring with a fish kelp emulsion will get it off to a good start for the season. Periodic leaf sprays along with the emulsion will help keep it in great shape. When growing rosemary in containers, it will need monthly feedings of liquid fertilizer, or the soil can be supplemented with controlled release pellets. For organic rosemary, use an organic fertilizer or fortify the soil with compost. Indoor rosemary plants will really thrive with a regular application of fertilizer. A layer of mulch will protect the plants over winter, and materials like grass clippings, hay, or straw are all great options to use. Transplanting is possible, but rosemary seeds germinate slowly. They typically emerge after three to four weeks and have a low germination rate, so it's best to propagate cuttings instead. Hardening off. When seeds are started indoors, harden them off first by putting them outside during the day, then bringing them in at night. Do this for a few days, then plant them outdoors. After the process is complete, transplants can then be planted outdoors or in containers. Repotting. Unlike many other herbs, rosemary can grow into a substantial plant up to 48 inches, 122 centimeters. To keep rosemary plants smaller and more manageable, repot during the spring into the same size pot. During repotting, prune the roots of the plant to stunt its growth by snipping off about a third of the root material. Then put the plant back into the same size container with fresh potting material. For a larger plant, simply step up the pot size and repot normally. Transplant cuttings. After about eight weeks, rosemary cuttings will be rooted and ready to transplant, and heavily rooted cuttings will give the best growing results. Plants can also be soft pinched by hand or by scissors during the transplanting process, which will help them grow to a uniform, upright height and encourages their branching. Dews. Rosemary makes a good companion for beans, brassicas, peppers, and carrots, since rosemary often repels cabbage moths, Mexican bean beetles, and carrot rust flies. The great news is that rosemary doesn't have any garden adversaries. Growing structure options. Raised beds. Prepare the soil first by removing all rocks, shrubs, weeds, and plant debris. If needed, fertilize it as well to supplement the nutrition added from compost or organic matter. If the soil's pH is too low, add some lime to make it more alkaline. It's also beneficial to add about four inches of organic matter or compost to the surface and incorporate it well, normally to a depth of six to eight inches, 15 to 20 centimeters. Raised or slightly mounded beds can provide the best drainage for rosemary plants. Containers. When using containers, make sure they're six to eight inches deep and have at least one drainage hole. If possible, use high quality potting soil that's loose, well draining, and contains a slow release fertilizer. If the same container was used before, it should be sterilized with a solution of one part bleach to nine parts water and rinse well before using it again. Aphids. These tiny pests come in a variety of colors, green, 
black, red, light orange, or yellow, and mainly feed on the undersides of leaves and stems. What they're actually feeding on is the sap in plants, which ends up causing the plants damage. Aphids also leave behind a sticky substance called honeydew, and they are a pest that's known to spread diseases. Aphids can be tolerated by most plants when their numbers are low, but if there's a lot of aphids, they can stunt a plant's growth and cause a plant's leaves to turn yellow and fall off. Here's what to do. For the most part, plants can handle mild aphid infestations, but if they're found, a strong jet of water from a garden hose will wash them off the plants. Spraying plants with water should be done early in the morning so that the plants can dry off during the day. Sticky traps, neem oil, insecticidal soaps, and horticultural oils are also effective against aphids. Just be sure to follow the application instructions on the packaging. Oftentimes, you can also get rid of aphids by wiping or spraying the leaves with a mild solution of water and a few drops of dish soap. One variation includes adding a pinch of cayenne pepper. Soapy water should be reapplied every two to three days for about two weeks. As well, you can try to attract beneficial insects like lady beetles, hoverflies, and lacewings, all of which are important aphid predators. Make sure to check all transplants for aphids before planting. And keep in mind that aphids aren't very mobile, so it's not uncommon to find one heavily affected plant surrounded by plants that are fine. If this is the case, simply remove and destroy the infected plant. Spittle bugs. These are small brown insects that leave little wads of spit on plants. Spittle bugs suck the sap from the needles of a plant and then surround themselves with a white foamy substance. These pests are mostly an issue for plants growing outside, but they can also become a problem for plants that are grown inside or in a greenhouse. Here's what to do. Use a strong jet of water to wash away the foamy substance made by these bugs, as well as the spittle bugs themselves that are hiding inside a plant. Typically, this spray of water will also kill the larvae, young spittle bugs. Do this once or twice a week for as long as needed. White flies. These pests are known for their white bodies and wings, and for hanging out on the undersides of leaves. They feed on the leaves of a plant, causing damage that makes the plant susceptible to other diseases. These pesky flies will typically group together on the undersides of leaves, and then the flies will fly up when disturbed. Here's what to do. Remove any affected leaves or the whole plant if it's severely infested. Introduce beneficial insects like ladybugs, spiders, lacewing larvae, and dragonflies into the garden. Use yellow sticky traps and apply insecticidal soaps or oils. Keep in mind that these oils, like neem oil, might reduce white fly numbers but they won't eliminate them entirely. Bacterial blight. A disease that causes water-soaked spots to appear on leaves. Those spots will grow and turn brown while also being surrounded in yellow. And when the lesions come together, plants develop a burned appearance. At this point, any leaves that die will remain attached to the plant. Bacterial blight will also stunt the growth of plants, and it can be spread by water, wind, animals, or people. Here's what to do. Plant certified disease-free seeds when possible and practice good crop rotation. Use drip watering methods or any watering method that focuses on only watering the base of the plant. Avoid splashing water onto plants and make sure the plant leaves are kept nice and dry. As well, ensure good ventilation and air movement by spacing plants properly. This will also help reduce any humidity around those plants. It's also important to control the growth of any nearby weeds. Another thing that can be done to avoid disease is to treat seeds with an antibiotic before planting to kill off the bacteria. 
finally, spray plants with a protective copper-based fungicide before any disease symptoms appear. Leaf Spot Circular, deep purple spots will first appear on the upper leaves. These spots then grow, and the spots' centers turn grayish to white on older leaves and light brown on young leaves. These spots will also have a defined reddish-purple to rusty brown border, and as the spots grow, those spots dry out. The stems of affected plants will also wilt, and severe infections can become an entry point for other rotting diseases. Here's what to do. Plant disease-free seeds when possible. Also, avoid long leaf wetness by watering in the morning, avoiding overhead watering, and by spacing plants properly. It helps to avoid working in the garden when plants are wet, since leaf spot is mainly spread by splashing water. As well, it's important to practice crop rotation. If leaf spot is present, remove any infected plants to prevent the disease from spreading. Powdery mildew. Small white patches will appear on the upper and lower leaf surfaces, which might also show some purple blotching. Patches often come together to form a dense powdery layer, coating the leaves and causing the leaves to curl inward. In some cases, eventually the leaves will drop from the plant. Typically, the white patches start on the older leaves and then eventually spread to other plant parts. Powdery mildew is brought on by high humidity and moderate temperatures, 60 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, or 16 to 27 degrees Celsius, with symptoms becoming most severe in shaded areas. As well, this disease often acts as an entry point for other pests and diseases. Here's what to do. First, rotate crops so that members of the same family aren't planted in the same spot year after year. In general, a three-year rotation is a good place to start. Plant disease-resistant varieties when possible, and then provide good air circulation by not crowding the plants and by eliminating weeds. Water plants in the morning to give them enough time to dry out, taking care not to get the plant's leaves wet. Consider spraying infected plants with certain protectant, preventative fungicides. Sulfur, lime sulfur, neem oil, and potassium bicarbonate are all effective, but these remedies will work best when they are used before the infection happens or when signs of the disease are first spotted. Instead of chemical fungicides, plants can also be sprayed with a bicarbonate solution by simply mixing one teaspoon of baking soda in one quart of water. Make sure to spray the plants thoroughly, since the solution will only kill fungi that it comes into contact with. Also, potassium bicarbonate, which is similar to baking soda, can actually eliminate powdery mildew once it's there and does the job fairly quickly. As well, after the growing season, make sure to dispose of any infected leaves or fruit. Once plants are heavily infected with powdery mildew, it's difficult to get rid of the disease, so focus on preventing it from spreading to other plants. Root rot. A fungal disease that causes plants to become limp, while any terminal leaves, those at the tips of stems, as well as the stems will die off. This is because the roots are no longer able to absorb and move nutrients and water to the rest of the plant. Typically, the lower leaves of an affected plant will turn yellow. Gray, black, or red lesions will also appear on the lower stems and roots. Root rots can affect both seedlings and mature plants. Here's what to do. Plant crops in well-draining soil and water sparingly, allowing the soil to dry before watering. In general, watering once every one to two weeks is enough but this amount might need to be adjusted to suit the local climate. Also, practice crop rotation and avoid using too much nitrogen in the soil. If a plant has root rot already, dig up the plant and prune out any infected roots, then dust the roots with fungicide powder. If the entire root system is black and mushy, then the entire plant should be destroyed. Harvesting. 
Branches are harvested by cutting the terminal growth, 25 to 30 centimeters, 9.8 to 11.8 inches, before they become woody. Note, this terminal growth is usually at the tips of stems. Rosemary can be harvested several times in one season, but it's important to give the plant some time to recover and replace growth before the next harvest. Some varieties are also valued for their small flowers, which can be harvested for use in salads. Storage. Clippings can either be used fresh or dried for later use. Fresh cuttings will keep their best flavor for two to seven days in the fridge. To store rosemary for longer periods, hang it in bundles to dry. For longer storage of fresh rosemary clippings, wrap them in a damp paper towel and place them in a zipped bag, then stick it in the fridge. It should keep fresh this way for up to three weeks. Wrapped rosemary can also be placed inside a reusable plastic storage container. 